Greetings, it is Maxo Diddley here, and today I'm here with another Java tutorial to be give a in your coursework. And today we're here with threading. So, what is threading? Well, a thread is an independent path of execution within a program. So, basically, we can create multiple threads, or each one can do a different task at the same time, and we can basically speed up the process of doing a certain task or improve performance with a program because we can utilize more CPU cores. Uh, one CPU core can handle one thread at a time, but CPUs with hyperthreading will have cores that can handle two threads at once. So, basically, if you have done any Java before, you have successfully done threading before, because you've had to use at least one thread to run your program. Because you have to use your CPU to run your program, and if you use your CPU at least a bit, you're gonna be using at least one thread. So well done, well done. Anyway, so... We've got a print line here just to say this is thread 1. We want to create another thread, but first we need to create another class, and that class will basically have tasks where we can tell our thread to do. So let's create another class. We want to do class, a name, so I'm going to call it task 2, extends thread. So what's going on here? So we've created a class called task 2, and it's going to inherit anything from the thread class. So that's what extends thread does. Then we'll do public void run. And I made a mistake. And uh, this indenting has gone terribly wrong. Now, what you want to do, you want to, we're going to do a little for loop. We're going to print out 2,000 characters. So you want to do for int i equals 0, i less than 2,000, and i plus plus. We want to do system dot out dot print ln count plus i. So we've got a simple for loop here. It's going to print 2,000 characters, 0 to 1999. Now we actually want to create our thread. So firstly, we need to create an instance of this class. This is no different from usual. So we'll do task 2, then the name for the object or the instance. I'm going to call it thread2 equals new task2. And now we actually create the thread, so you want to get the name, which is going to be thread2 in this case, thread2.start. And we have created a second thread. And this is going to execute at the same time as the main method, which is thread1. So if you just play it, as you can see, yeah, you're not really going to notice any threading going on because this is said before the thread's created. So, yeah. So, how am I going to prove to you that this threading is going on? Well, I'm going to create a third thread, which is also just going to print out loads of text. So, we're going to create another thread, and it's going to do what this class is doing. But firstly, before we create another thread, we actually are going to do a check, just in case you have a Stone Age PC, which is called a toaster. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do an if statement. Then we're going to do runtime.getRuntime dot available processors greater than two. So what does this actually do? Basically, it gets the amount of threads your PC is capable of running. So basically, it will get your core count, all your core count, and your hyper-threading count, which is basically just double your core count in most cases. Mine would say 16, because I have a Ryzen 7 with eight cores and hyper-threading. So this will basically say how many threads your PC is capable of running. And if it's greater than two, meaning your PC can run at least three, then we're going to create our third thread. If not, then you have a toaster. So we're basically going to do task two, thread three, equals new task two. Basically, we create another instance of this class, but we're calling it thread three because it can't be the same as that because this class has been created already. Then we'll do thread three dot start. And that's all we do. Also, instead of thread one, we're also going to just going to print out that, just so we can, just so you can see how many of your uh, threads your CPU can handle. So we're going to execute this, and you're going to see that we are actually using multiple threads. So at first you might be confused. However, firstly, sixteen. That's the only things I have. So we got count zero, count one, count two. Then we go back to count zero. Why? Well, basically, this count zero is is the is the third thread uh, doing its task, as opposed to the second thread. 
So as you can clearly see, if we do that again, we have been threading right here. And as you can see, it's actually different this time. So it says count zero, then count zero, then count one, count one, count two, count two, count three, count three, count four, count four, count five, count five. So this time it'll explain them in a slightly neater way. However, we get to count seven, then we go to count eight, then we go back to count six, then get back to count nine, then back to count seven. As you can see, it's not in the order that the for loop would make it to be. Mainly because it's printing the tasks that two threads are doing as opposed to one. Therefore, it's, it's going to sometimes print out of order with the counting because the two threads are doing it at the same time. Anyway, guys, thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Uh, there will be more episodes to this series. This is more of an introduction so you can basically thread your program and make it more efficient. Be sure to su subscribe if you want to see more. And thanks for being a great audience. I'll see you next time.